This is Around the Farm, the podcast about all things ag, and I'm your host, Rick Myra, coming to you from my basement. Hey, these are strange days. They're challenging times. And our guests today are going to talk to us a little bit about how they're adapting and staying connected with all their customers and partners on the countryside. Lindsay Friel is a precision specialist with Nutrien, and Allie White is a field sales representative for the DeKalb and Asgrow brand. They're going to talk to us today about the tools that they're using to stay connected and to make sure that we're still having a productive year and they're bringing all the value that their customers expect. Lindsay and Allie, thanks for joining us around the farm. Want to go ahead and let our listeners to know a little bit about who they're talking to this morning. So, Lindsay, can you go ahead and take a couple of moments and just let our listeners know a little bit about your background? So, my name is Lindsay Friel. Um, I currently work for Nutrient Ag Solutions in Manless Walnut. I've been there since I graduated from Illinois State three years ago. I originally, or I grew up in southern Illinois, um, about an hour southeast of Effingham. I started working for a local co-op down there my senior year in high school. Um, I had always been around the farm, but I kind of wanted to get more into the retail side of things. I started working for the co-op down there, and I just kind of moved through as I, I continued college. And then um, I ended up at Nutrien, and I have been their precision ag specialist. So I kind of handle everything technology, climate field view dealer, I work with our Echelon program, gathering data off of our machines and um, inputting soil samples, kind of a catch-all on the technology side. Lindsay, I, I knew I liked you from the moment I laid eyes on you. As a proud Redbird myself, Manchester fourth floor, I was there just a couple of years before you were, one or two, <laughs> let's, let's, you know, not... Let's not count the number of years there were in between there. But, you know, now that I know this, after we get done with this, we're going to have to get together after this social distancing is over, head up to the pub too, pitchers of beer, some hot wings. I mean, reminisce about the good old days. I'm up for that. <laughs> How about you, Allie? Can you tell our listeners a little bit about you and your background? Hey, everybody. I'm Allie White. I work for Bear as a field sales representative. Uh, the brands that I represent are DeKalb, Asgro, and Climate Field View. Um, I actually grew up on a farm in central Illinois, so ag has been a part of my life from, from a very young age. Uh, went on to study ag econ at the University of Illinois, so sorry Rick and Lindsay, but I will still join you at the pub too for, uh, for some cheese curds for sure. <laughs> even, even rival universities in Illinois can, can always come together over cheese curds. We are in a world that is, uh, is experiencing unprecedented times, right? Uh, the, the coronavirus, COVID-19 has really ground to a halt a lot of the normal day-to-day -day interactions that we've had all throughout the U.S. And, and that's had a unique impact on agriculture, right? So you two are really at the forefront of what this looks like, right? Talk to us a little bit about what's been happening around the farm and how you've been staying connected with your farmers. Lindsay is, is a dealer that's, that's obviously it's an important time for you right now and, and getting guys going and planting is in full swing. How have you been able to maintain connectivity with your customers in these challenging times? I spend a lot of time on the phone. <laughs> Honestly, between my phone and my iPad, I can do just about everything that I need to do um, with the grower. I do have a couple people at the location that have been helping me with the hands-on side of things, just setups and more of the hardware part of it. But with different apps on my phone, I've been able to, to handle a lot of the calls that come through. You know, Allie, from your perspective, you're, you're working with a lot of dealers. You're, uh, you're, you're trying to get things locked in for the season. How have things changed for you and what tools have you been using? Leading up to planting when this whole thing kind of started ramping up, uh, there was definitely, you know, a lot less chats around the kitchen table and uh, just dropping by the farm or the different retail locations. So like Lindsay said, there's been a lot of handling conversations over the phone, but one of the things that, that comes to mind for me is trying to uh, plan uh, for executing different plots and trials for this year. And having to set all of those things up over the phone is definitely different than, than how we've done it in the past. But, um, you know, utilizing climate um, in that way to help us choose those appropriate fields and being able to easily share those fields back and forth with each other from from the grower's account to us to be able to pick those right fields has, has helped us 
uh, get get those decisions made and, and move forward as quickly as we needed to. Yeah, it's it's been bizarre for me. I, I can't remember a, a spring where I, I haven't been out in the countryside and riding in a planter, talking with farmers, um, being out in the countryside and, uh, and frankly, you know, being, being stuck at home here has been a little bit challenging. You feel like you're, you're kind of sidelined. And I know for you guys that that's, that's even more difficult. If you think about it, Lindsay, you know, there, there's always the last second needs that are happening. How, how are you guys working through some of those challenges around when a farmer needs to come out to the, to the store and pick something up or, or they need some help with something? What's the modus operandi there? Yeah. So at the location, um, we've actually got designated areas for different, um, different people at the plant. So, um, you don't leave your area unless there's something drastic going on and we're just having farmers, you know, call in when they get there. Don't leave your pickup. Um, we bring things to you much more them staying in their vehicle than there ever was before. Now you wonder you know, how much of that is, is kind of nice in terms of coming out and somebody just delivers it to the truck, but you, you lose a lot of that, uh, the interaction that's so unique to agriculture, right? We're a, we're a relationship business, always have been a handshake business, and uh, you know, we're in an environment where there's not a lot of handshaking going on. How have you set up your operations, Lindsay, where uh, to notify your customers about these different changes that you guys are making to, uh, to allow for some of that social distancing? Social media has obviously been a big, big player um, at our location. Um, posting things on Facebook and Twitter. And then it's kind of a word of mouth thing at this point. I mean, our salesmen, we're, we're constantly in contact with our growers and we're just trying to be as, as open as we can with them. I think they understand that the health and safety of not only themselves, but you know our people as well is top priority. They kind of ask before they call in, you know, what, what, what do I need to do? Farming has always been a team sport too. And I, I'm, I'm interested, you know, what are your farmers telling you about, you know, they, they typically would have a lot of folks around farm helping out. Are they able to still get done what they need to, or are they able to get access to the resources that they need to, to be able to get crop in? And once the crop is in to, to start to manage in season? They're making it work. It, it may not be the perfect scenario. They may not have someone out there. Um, helping them load the planter like they would in the past or riding along, but everybody's kind of working together to get through the season. For sure. I mean, Ellie, you were talking about plots and man, as, as somebody that's, uh, that's been around plots for a lot of years, I, I know that that in particular is typically a hands-on thing, right? How, how have you and the team been working with folks out in the countryside to make sure that we're, we're getting the right plots in, getting the, the information that we need? You know, it's, it's funny when you think about plots, plots got a couple of purposes, right? It's, hey, I want to evaluate a product so that I can determine if I want to plant more of it next year. And if we don't get the plots right this year, it, it makes it harder to, to make decisions next year. So you know, how are you and the team working with folks out in the countryside to make sure they're getting the right plots in and getting them in in a way that's going to help them make the right decision next year? It's definitely go time here in Northern Illinois. So to Lindsay's point earlier, as best as we can, we're back to business as usual with some of those new kind of safety procedures set in place. And really a lot of a lot of making sure that we're executing plots correctly and safely is just having a quick little safety huddle at the beginning of plots, which we normally do anyways, just to say, hey, here's some procedure here. Um, you know, I'm going to be on, on this portion of the plot. Somebody else is going to be working over here just to make sure that we're kind of respecting everybody's personal space and just not putting anybody in, a, in an uncomfortable uh, situation when thinking about the, the state of the world that we're in right now. So we are um, doing our best. We're getting everything done that we need to. And, and to Lindsay's point too, social media has been a big help. When thinking about just preparations for planting, Lindsay did a really great job and had uh, a pre-plant meeting for a lot of her customers to make sure they were ready to go. Um, we were lucky in that that meeting took place before before this COVID-19 stuff hit, but for a lot of um, growers who didn't have a chance to do an in-person refresher and training, there's been a lot of great resources that Climate has put out to make sure that they're prepared as far as just spring readiness webinars and um, our local climate activation manager has been putting on some of those webinars too. So we've been finding different ways to make sure that everybody's prepared and ready to go from that technical piece to make sure that their climate account is going to be running smoothly uh, as soon as they hit the ground running. 
You know, Ali, you, you bring up an interesting point. There's, there's been this boom of digital connectivity that's, that's come out of this, right? You know, people are ordering groceries online. Uh, the only way that you can talk to your friends and family in a lot of instances, especially when the weather was a little bit worse, is through some sort of video chat. Tell me a little bit about how farmers have adopted this technology, right? I mean, typically, if I would have thought about the world four months ago, I haven't done a video chat with with any of the farm customers that I've worked with in a long time, right? Um, unless there was a very explicit and, and purpose for it. And you guys are local too, right? So there's there's even less reason to, to get on a video chat for you guys. So Lindsay, talk a little bit about how you've seen uh, your farmer customers adapt new technologies to to really stay connected in these these challenging times. So honestly, I've done more FaceTiming with growers than I ever thought that I would do. And it's just been that I can't be in the cab with them. So it's easy just to, to pull out their iPhone to, to FaceTime their screen. Um, I mean, remote viewing is great through the Climate Field View app, but um, there are a lot of things that we can't diagnose from that screen. So there's things in the settings that we need to look at and being able to, to see that screen and describe to them that icon that they can click on. It's a lot easier than over the phone. So I, I never thought that a grower would be FaceTiming me, but it's happened. How about you, Allie? Have you guys been utilizing some conferencing software, social media? What some of the new tools look like for you? Yeah, so definitely internally been using uh, a lot more video conferencing than we typically have, uh, but it's really been a, a good thing. Uh, we've been able to do a lot more meetings face-to-face -face virtually, right, rather than over the phone. So um, we've been able to uh, adopt some things like Microsoft Team and Zoom and, and things like that to have a lot of these critical conversations right now. And of course, it takes a little bit of time in the beginning to get set up and make sure um, everybody's video and microphones are working smoothly. But once we get past that, it, it makes for a lot better conversation when, when you can look each other in the eye, even though it might be through a computer screen. Yeah, that's, that's Lindsay. You know, you talked about just FaceTiming. There, there's a beautiful simplicity in just, you know, telling the iPhone to FaceTime somebody, right? I, there's no setup. You're not messing with the camera settings. Uh, you get that one-on-one -on -one conversation, which is, is good. And it's always amazing to me how much more I feel like you get out of being able to see the person than even just having the phone conversation, right? Yeah, absolutely. Like we've talked about before, you know, you can't be in the cab with the grower. That's where a lot of these conversations, they snowball, they... They, they bring up other things that, you know, we're focusing on in the season. And since we're not having that relationship, being able to see the grower kind of gives them your attention more than just a phone call. They can see that you're focused on them and you can truly help with their situation. There, there's something nice about seeing somebody face to face. I don't know what it is. I, I feel like I can hear better. I, I, it has nothing to do with actually being able to hear, but... I, to your point, maybe it's just the fact that you're you're looking at somebody, you're you're a little bit more wrapped in your attention around uh, around the things that they're saying. But I, I do feel like you you get a much better line of communication when uh, even when you use the video chats. The conferences are a little bit more challenging. People get to take turns to talk and jump in there, which is a little bit different for people to get used to. But it, it's amazing how quickly folks in the industry have adapted these new technologies. I joke with my wife all the time. Can you imagine if this would have happened 15 years ago? I didn't want to have to be dialing up into America online and just, just chat with somebody uh, around these things. It would have been a whole new world. I'm not sure if I'd, I'd had enough to do when we're not taking care of the kids. We're just trying to plow through what's left in Netflix. And uh, if we didn't have that, it'd be tough to watch network TV all the time. Well, hey, you know, this has been been a crazy, crazy spring. Ellie, from your perspective, what, what's been the biggest challenge that you've run into as, uh, as you've tried to, to get things done this spring? So for me, that's a, that's a big thing that, that I work on during planting is just the execution of those different trials and plots to make sure that we're um, keeping collecting that valuable data um, to use for future recommendations for those products too. So nailing down those, those plot locations was certainly a different process this year, uh, but being able to use climate uh, to identify those fields has made it easier to be able to have those conversations over the phone. Being able to be on the phone with a customer and walking through, hey, share your field to, 
to this, to, to my account or to our local TA's account so we can all still evaluate if that field is gonna be appropriate without actually sitting next to each other in the shop. So Climate has been able to help us stay connected in that way and get done exactly what we need to. How about you, Lindsay? What's been the toughest thing you've encountered this spring? With my job, I'm very hands-on. Being forced to step back in that situation um, has been really hard for me. I look forward to the spring and helping the growers get everything ready, get their tractors ready, get iPads updated, the, the conversations that come from that. And I've just really just been stuck at home waiting for them to call or, you know, for me to reach out and, and catch them in the right situation. And, and that's kind of been a, a struggle for me, having to, to give up some of that on the farm business. Yeah, you know, it's, it's funny how times change, you know. Normally we'd be, we'd be sitting in a conference room or we'd be, be sitting on the bed of the truck having this conversation. Instead, we're here you know, having this conversation on webcam and I can hear my two-year-old upstairs just having an absolute meltdown. So I, I hope that's not coming through in the audio, but you know, the environment's changed. Things are a little bit different these days. I'm actually shocked that a princess hasn't walked through the door and asked for some milk. I mean, that's just kind of the reality of the world that we live in now. But, you know, you guys have both mentioned utilizing digital tools. You've talked about social media, video chats, et cetera, et cetera. You've also both talked about using FieldView to to stay connected in these times. Lindsay, can can you talk to us about any specific scenario with uh, with a farmer where them having FieldView has has helped you to stay connected or help them to uh, to get planting executed this spring. With growers uh, and, and field view, being able to share their data, um, not only with myself, but their salesmen, um, with Alley, with insurance companies, um, we're able to do a lot more digitally and um, get answers a lot quicker versus having to wait and share those paper copies like we have had to in the past. It is truly a team sport, right? And and being able to seamlessly and quickly share information has been a huge benefit. Um, I, I can't imagine, again, thinking about just five, 10 years from now, the amount of jump drives we've been mailing around, you know, printed maps. I'm, I'm relatively sure, Lindsay, you would have received at least a novel's worth of printed maps, you know, snail mailed to you. USPS would be uh, be bringing all those over to you. So it's it's nice to be able to send those through the interwebs um, and be able to get those more in real time. Allie, you know, you, you come at this from a bit of a different perspective, you know, working for, uh, for DeKalb Asgro. How has uh, FieldView connectivity helped you to stay connected to dealers and, and farmers and help them execute for the spring? Thinking about operations uh, that are shared accounts that you can go in and see, hey, let's take a look at some of these planting maps, which products are planted where, and thinking about some of the different locations where I have plots or trials. One of the things that I like to do, kind of compare and contrast and keep notes on some of those different hybrids is just using some of those scouting features like dropping pins and taking notes right within the climate app and doing something just as easily as sharing that pin um, and some of those scouting notes um, back with the cooperator. So you can stay in touch with them about what you're seeing. Maybe a particular hybrid is um, just shooting out of the ground and emerging really, really well compared to the hybrid right next to it. So just kind of taking note of of some of those things, but using something like climate to to stay connected and to continue that communication when you're not face to face has been valuable. So with those shared accounts, there's a lot of small things that you can do like that just to stay connected with each other and really track the progress of the different hybrids and varieties throughout the growing season too. You know, scouting, I think, is going to be one that's that's going to be huge for us going into to emergence and, and early in the season, right? Between dro- being able to drop the scouting pins to field health imagery, even to being able to share custom application layers, uh, you know, Lindsay, as you think about your your custom application business that you guys do and the amount of work that happens there, just the ability to be able to shoot that map layer over to a farmer so that they can see that it happened, they've got the record of it, you follow up with some scouting pins, monitor the application through the season with the imagery. How do you think that this season is going to progress a little bit differently from your perspective, Lindsay, where these tools have been available and they've been nice to have, but now they're almost mandatory. They're, they're table stakes. We've got to have these things. How do you think this changes the season as, as you guys think about how you service your farmers and continue to help them to raise a productive crop? So I'm actually really excited to see what's going to come of 
um, how the growers have adapted to this season. We've kind of already been working that way in the past where we've got um, Climate Field View in a couple of our custom application rigs. So um, like our anhydrous ammonia, our sprayers, certain ones do already have Climate Field View in them. So we're able to shoot that map right directly to the grower's account. We had the option to do it, but we never really had to put it into place. And now we truly you know, have to show our growers those maps. And if we can shoot it directly to their account versus having to send them a paper copy of it, it's a lot easier for them to pull up. And in the past, I think they were very hesitant about going all digital. You know, they were afraid we were gonna lose that touch point, but I think they're actually seeing the opportunities that are coming out of it, not only with myself, but with the salesman when we can say, pull up your iPad and look up this map that we put in there for you. And it's already in their account and they can see everything right there. I think the benefits of it are gonna outweigh all the bad that's happened this season. It's always hard to look for the silver lining in these things. But there, there is the silver lining of it's, it's forced all of us to get a little bit uncomfortable, right? And I, I think the funny thing, at least from my perspective, is we're going to come out of this in not everything that we did as this all transpired are we going to keep. But I do think that there's going to be some amazing things that we learn about being more efficient and, and keeping connected and utilizing things like digital tools that are, are going to have a lasting impact. And I, I think that uh, to your point of, hey, I, I don't want to lose that, that personal connection. I don't want to lose that handshake type of relationship that, uh, that you develop with so many in the industry. I think we're going to come out of this and folks are going to see that the digital connectivity does nothing but enhance that. Ali, I, I think about it from your perspective. You guys are always setting up a lot of field days, a lot of tech showcases. Talk a little bit about what you guys are, are brainstorming around how do you have a virtual event? That's something that we've been kind of thinking long term is how this will change the way that we get large groups together for things like you mentioned, field days, different, you know, plot tours and things like that, that we normally are trying to execute during the summer. So those are some things that we'll, we'll still need to think through a little bit, but we've had some good examples of how we can get things like that done through some of the uh, meetings and webinars that we've had with this kind of technology to reach large groups of people without being face-to-face. -face. So some of those ideas will probably continue to develop as we get closer, but no, that's a good point. And thinking about for myself, I'm usually spending somewhere between two, two to three hours on the road a day if I'm out and about. So thinking about that extra time uh, and what I can get done in those extra few hours. Maybe I don't get to have a face-to-face -face with somebody, but it still gives me a great opportunity to either hop on a call with them and some additional time to, to make phone calls and, and have those conversations that are, that are needed and just be extra efficient in those extra hours of the day that I have back uh, from not being on the road. Getting that time back is, is another one of those silver linings again, right? You've, you've now got time to do some things that you probably weren't able to do before. As you think about people trying new things, uh, adapting new technologies, being forced to, to get outside of, uh, of the normal box and the normal routine, Lindsay, you've onboarded a lot of customers with digital tools across what, uh, what you guys offer at Nutrient and the tremendous suite of tools that they have. As you think about somebody that's getting started, somebody that, uh, that maybe wasn't as big on technology, wasn't as big on digital farming, but this whole situation has really kind of forced them to get into the game a bit, what would you recommend as kind of the first couple of steps for a farmer to get started with FieldView? Yeah, absolutely. So um, this has kind of always been my approach in the past anyways. Um, but I like to go out to the grower, show them show them what FieldView has to offer. And then um, once we, we talk about those options, I like to get some raw data from the grower and throw it into my account. Um, that we can sit there and look at it together. We can, you know, get rid of it, get rid of it out of my account. They can see all all the privacy parts along with that. But actually seeing the data on their own fields, um, I think, really opens their eyes because then it applies to them. Um, so that's kind of where we start whenever we're setting up a new account. And then from there, you know, maybe we throw the drive into their their planter and let them see it go across the field. Um, we once we kind of make those steps and they see how valuable it is to their operation, um, they they come around very quickly 
and or usually they come around very quickly and from there it's just a snowball effect i mean i've got guys that we had to move into a planting harvest um, situation with climate um, just for different things that they were doing with their operation and now they're mapping every single piece of equipment that's on their farm and um, i think it's really exciting to see how how valuable it is to them um, not only for their operation but it it truly helps um it truly helps them uh, make decisions um, on the farm. You know, that's, that's really interesting, Lindsay, in talking about how farmers can really get started in, and start their digital journey with FieldView. Allie, I know that there's, there's lots of resources out there. Where, where do you point farmers in terms of some of the things that they can use to help them get started? One of the things that separates climate from other digital ag platforms is the level of support that we have behind the product. So one of the main ways to get great resources is online at climate.com. There is so much content there. There's instructional videos, there's PDFs for you to either print out or pull up on your iPad that can walk you through just about anything you're trying to figure out. And beyond that, the, the support team at Climate and then the support out within the dealer force. Um, we've got a lot of people out there that are committed to, to making sure that you have good success with this product. So that's one thing I wanted to mention too, is the support system behind Climate is something that really sets us apart. It's a big deal in these times to be able to get those resources, to still be able to connect with someone. And, you know, as you talk about climate support, one of the things that I hear from customers is it's great to still have that support line that they can call, right? You can get somebody at virtually any time to, to be able to help you to troubleshoot those issues. So having that connectivity, having those resources, hugely beneficial in these challenging times. Lindsay, as, as you talk to farmers that jump on the system, start using it, return, profitability, value are always key things that farmers are looking for. What do they tell you after they, they start to have those experiences and they say, hey, I, I want to keep doing this. I, I, I want to collect more. W what are some of the things that they're saying to you about why they, uh, they not just want to adopt at this point, but they're going to start mapping all of their acres or look at capturing application data or more yield data? and using that to, to help make decisions? I think the biggest thing I hear is every field is a trial. Every application, every planting pass, everything's a trial. And I think that is what excites not only the growers, but ourselves. They can easily go into field view and make a zone or change a map layer. And now they're mapping everything that they're doing on the field. And then when it comes time for harvest, they don't even have to touch a button. As they go through the field, they're already seeing exactly what they did in the season. They don't have to wait for, you know, data to come back. They don't have to wait for all these other um, scenarios. It's right there on their iPad. And I think that's where the grower truly benefits and where they find their excitement in, in field view. Yeah, you think about those plots again. We've, we talked a lot about plots. I mean, what we do in farming is we test, right? Everything that we do is a test. Whether we realize it or not, we're evaluating every single decision we make and deciding, do we want to do that again next year? Was there a benefit? You know, Ali, the DeKalb Asgrow team has, has long been on the forefront of plots, testing, research and development. Um, how have you guys been using FieldView as, we've, as we practice more social distancing to supplements and add to the to the value of that impressive testing network and and how how have you been able to use that data to to bring more information to dealers like Lindsay and to, to farmers out in the countryside at, at this point in the game many 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 if not all of our plot cooperators are on the climate field view platform so they are collecting that plot planting information and for a lot of situations come harvest time, we don't even need to bring the weigh wagon out to, to weigh that plot. We can collect that data spatially through climate. And something that we've done in the past, um, God willing, this COVID-19 situation is over, but you know, normally I'd be stuck down at the weigh wagon um, collecting results and you know, typing, typing the numbers into my iPad. Whereas last year was really a big shift in let's leave out the way wagons the the value of me being able to sit up in that cab with the plot cooperator um, not only having a chance to see what all of our new products are looking like from the cab but just being able to continue that relationship with the grower 
is so valuable being able to sit next to them for an hour while we harvest the plot rather than being stuck down at the way wagon and just getting to catch up with them afterwards. So that was a big shift that we took last year that, that I hope we can continue this year too. But being able to have all of our different plots collected through climate has made it very easy so that at the end of harvest, we can compile all of these different plots and, and make really good local recommendations based off of what we learned from, from all the hard work that we put in during planting. More of that value from having a big data set, right? Being able to see more, more consistency. And it's, it's really interesting, Ellie, you, you talk about it. There's, there's another example of, hey, I'm, I'm not having to be down at the way wagon. I can actually have more personal connectivity with my customers, with my dealers, because I, I don't have to do this extra step that maybe I had to do in the past. So it's really been exciting to see how we can apply some of these new digital technologies, stay connected in these challenging times, and, and ultimately still raise a, a highly productive crop for the season. So it'll be fun to watch as we move through the season. And, you know, speaking of fun, you, you got to maintain sanity in these, these crazy times, right? So let me throw the oddball question out of you guys. As you've been sequestered at home, if you, as you've been practicing social distancing, Lindsay, what's been your favorite thing to do online with your friends and family? You've been playing games, just video chatting. What have you been doing to, to keep yourself busy and stay connected with, uh, with your, your friends and loved ones? Um, I'm expecting here at the end of the month. So um, it's kind of been a, a change of pace for us where everybody kind of wants to see or know what's going on. And um, no one can see me because I'm stuck in my house. So um, it's it's been a lot of, you know, Snapchatting and sending pictures and phone calls. And um, I think I honestly spend more time on my phone now than I ever have in the past. And it's and it, business included, but, you know, um, talking to a family and just staying connected using different games and and uh, different apps have, have really helped kind of, you know, keep us connected that way. Well, congratulations. I, uh, I, I didn't know that you were expecting. It's, uh, is, is this your first, second? Uh, first. Your yeah. first. Wow. Having this life change at this time is, is somebody that, you know, I, I already talked about my three animals upstairs that, uh, that are running around having a good time. They're six, four, and two. This is going to be a bit different for you coming out of, uh, of labor and delivery. Now, I am excited to hear. You, you've got a, we've got a follow-up uh, after you give birth. I do need to know if, you know, you were doing any remote viewing from labor and delivery, if you're firing off any text, responding <laughs> to any scouting pins. I mean, really going above and beyond in those situations. Uh, actually, that's funny you say that. Um, there's a salesman at the location that as soon as we had announced that we were expecting, he, he kind of made the joke to when we were on the farm that, you know, Lindsay's going to be the one that's like, hold on a second, I got to answer this call. So <laughs> um, it's kind of funny that you bring that up. <laughs> The blessing and the curse of digital connectivity, right? You're never disconnected. Right. I always, I always joke, you know, uh, I'll remember back in, uh, back in college, I, I swear there was one semester where I was at school and no one had a cell phone. And I came back from winter break and in January, everyone had a cell phone. And I, I always joke with my wife, do you remember when, you know, you couldn't immediately get a hold of every single person that you wanted to get a hold of. Like you had to leave a message and wait for them to call you back. There's sometimes I miss those days, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a whole new world now. Right. Well, Allie, how about you? What have you been doing to stay connected with friends and family? Yeah, absolutely. I was going to say, I think you might be dating yourself with that comment, Rick there for the <laughs> cell phone comment. Um, yeah. For what I've been doing on my end, FaceTime has certainly been, a lifesaver. I live about two hours away from from my folks, so being able to to connect with them over FaceTime and um, quiz my dad on how he's coming along with planting progress has been good. Uh, but other than that, there's been a few uh, digital happy hours go down in the last few weeks, which has been a fun way to connect with coworkers. Uh, it's been a fun way to connect with friends. I've got, you know. I've got a few friends that are in different states that, that are in different countries. And one thing coming out of this whole situation is, is we, we question, why have we not done this before? Um, we already have such a limited amount of time that we get to spend together. Let's continue to do some of these things and uh, keep up with each other digitally, because even though we're not in the same room together, it is just as fun to 
uh, hop on a video chat for a couple hours and catch up and see each other's faces. Isn't that the truth? We, we've noticed that too with some, some friends that live a little bit further away as to, hey, why haven't we been doing this more often versus just talking on the phone from time to time? It's, it's yeah. a great way to stay connected. And, you know, in, in today's world where, you know, people tend to spread out a little bit more, it gives you that opportunity to stay connected. Now, I, I do have to go in the corner and feel shame for a little while here, Allie. You know, you, you dropped a little bit of old man on me. I'm, I'm dating myself there. You know, I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling a bit dated now. You know, I, I still remember when there was a phone where you had to push the buttons and, and you were connected to the cord. Um, you know, I, I have to accept that I'm getting older now. I mean, it's, uh, I'm, I'm an eighties kid. So, uh, <laughs> I, I need to, I need to make peace with that. I suppose. Want to make sure before we get out the door here that, uh, that, our listeners know how they can connect with both of you ladies, because I know that you're both very active on social media. So, Lindsay, can you tell uh, can you tell our listeners how they can follow you on social media? So you can find me on Twitter. Uh, Lindsay Friel underscore is my username. Um, but I like to post different updates that are going on through the season, and um, those have kind of gotten a little slower here recently. But I'm excited to pick that back up and um, start updating again. Um, through my Twitter. How about you, Ellie? How can they uh, stay connected to you? Yeah, you guys can give me a follow on Twitter. My handle is at underscore Allison White, and Allison is spelled A-L-Y-C-E-N, so underscore Allison White. I like to post a lot of uh, different things about some of the new products that we have coming to market, um, and uh, post different pictures and updates with things like that during the growing season. So um, if that sounds interesting to you, give me a follow. And if you have any questions, feel free to, to DM Lindsay or I um, on Twitter as well. All right. One last question before we get out of here, ladies. Allie, as soon as the social distancing is over, as soon as we get back to whatever the new normal is, what is the first thing that you are going to go out and do? Great question. I could I could go so many different directions with this. I think... Besides hitting up a few of my favorite um, restaurants around here, I'm definitely looking forward to um, headed back home south and paying my family a visit. I'm a, I'm a big family girl. Um, I only live two hours away from them, but I haven't seen them in a couple months. So being able to get back and have a good visit with them and uh, visit with uh, you know, my, my dad and brother and check in on planting progress, um, I'm excited to, to see my family for sure. How about you, Lindsay? I, I know that life is, is probably going to be a little bit different than you're used to with, uh, with, with the pregnancy coming out of the social distancing. What are, what are you guys excited about doing as, uh, as things get back to normal? Um, it looks like we're going to be in quarantine a little bit longer than most are um, with the little one on the way. Um, but I actually grew up in southern Illinois, four hours south. Um, so I'm excited just to be able to take my little one down there and kind of show um, the baby off to my to my family and be able to get back in into our routine of traveling and and on the go because that's kind of what we're used to and it's a, a little change of pace since we've been stuck at home. Awesome. Well, hey, I want to thank you guys for taking some time. I know that you're both very busy this time of the year. Lindsay Friel, Allie White, uh, really helping us to understand how you guys are staying connected with folks in the farming community, with your customers, with cooperators in these challenging time, using digital tools, being able to, to keep that, that performance high, to keep the connectivity high, and still be able to bring all the value that, uh, that your customers and partners expect from you in an extremely high way. So really appreciate you guys taking the time to, uh, to chat with us around the farm this morning and, uh, and hope you have a great rest of the season. Yeah, thank you, Rick. It was good talking to everybody and wishing everybody a, a safe spring. Yes, thanks, Rick. And uh, we're excited to, to see the new things coming from climate and keep getting the growers more and more attached. Well, Lindsay and Allie, thanks for joining us today. I know that this is a busy time of the year with planting going on, so we're excited to have the opportunity to, to learn a little bit about the tools that you guys are using. I also want to thank our listeners. We appreciate you for tuning in. For our listeners or FieldView users, I wanted to remind you that our support team is still available to help you out in these challenging times. You can reach them at 888-924-7475 or by email at support at climate.com. We've also got some new resources about how you can stay connected during these challenging times using remote functionality on FieldView. You can find that at www.climate.com slash stay connected. 
Once again, the Around the Farm podcast has been brought to you by Climate Field View. Don't miss out on any of our episodes. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever else you like to get your podcasts. If all else fails, you can always go to climate.com slash podcast. Let's be honest, our best ideas come from you. Give me a shout out on Twitter with your thoughts. You can find us at the at FieldView Twitter handle and then use the hashtag FieldViewATF so that we can find your tweets and steal your brilliance. And while you're giving feedback, we wouldn't turn down a five-star review if you've got the time. Hey, thanks for joining us. As always, it's been a blast. We'll see you around the farm.